Hey, it's Kathy here at Art Zone. I'm going to work with you to create our llama wearing glasses painting. Of course, you can switch this up any way you want. If you don't want to put glasses in a bow tie, if you just want the llama, you go for it. Or maybe you want to add a hat. I don't know. It's your painting, so you decide. We are going to start with the background. This background <clears throat> began with the green. But I'm going to switch it up in my example and I'm going to do a light blue background. I'm going to take my big paintbrush that was really wet again. I've been doing a lot of paintings today. Anyways, we're going to load up that paintbrush. Remember when painting a canvas, that canvas has edges, sides. Make sure and wrap that paint around the edges. I find that um, it just looks neater in the end. I'm actually going to be painting on paper, so I won't be doing that. Make sure when you are painting that you are taking your brush strokes back and forth all the way across that canvas. You wouldn't want to go back and forth and then up and down. That's just going to create a messy painting. I like to go back up into some of the paint I've already done and spread it out as I work so that I don't get too many globs of paint. Uh, we are using an acrylic paint. The acrylic paint that we're using is kind of thin, so I always tell people when they are doing this that they need to do it twice. So I'm, I'm going to have you paint your canvas whatever color it was you chose. I'm going to have you paint it twice, but you have to let it dry after that first layer. You can let it dry in a number of ways. One way, simply clean out your paintbrush, walk away, let your canvas sit there and dry 15, 20 minutes. It should be good. Or you can use a blow dryer. The problem with a blow dryer is if you hold the blow dryer too close to the canvas, or if your blow dryer is on super hot, it's going to dry the top layer of your paint. The bottom layer is not going to be dry. That's going to cause it to crack. So um, I really encourage you, just let it dry. If you're painting at home, you've got some time. Do this first layer, walk away, come back to it, paint your second layer, walk away, come back to it. You have to let the second layer dry also before you continue on. I'm actually painting on a uh, pretty thick paper. That paper does really soak in the paint and um, dries a little faster than a canvas will. So I am going to go ahead and go on to the next step, even though I haven't done my second layer, because this is um, more to show you the process than it is for me to create a painting that I would keep. I've already got this painting um, that I painted and ready for the wall, so I don't need to make a second one. My second part for this painting are the zigzags in the background. Uh, we use a special brush, a sponge, right here to do that. But it's tricky to use. You don't want to put a bunch of paint on this because then it's just going to smear everywhere. When you're getting paint on it, you have to lightly press it in there without actually pressing down into the paint because then it's going to get the paint on the, um, the parts that are not the zigzag. And that's not what you're wanting. You're wanting it on the zigzag. I really like to have a piece of paper next to me so that I can just sit here and roll onto it. I actually forgot my paper. So this is an art table. Don't do that at home. I don't think, I don't think, uh, people are gonna like cleaning that up, but yeah, just take it back and forth, roll without pushing so that you're getting paint on the whole thing. Once again, when we put this on here, that layer needs to be dry. Otherwise it's going to mix together. It might pull the paint off, um, and not do what you really want. It is kind of tricky to really just try and take it slow without pressing down across that canvas. Hopefully you had enough paint on your uh, sponge that you could just go all the way across without running out of paint. If you did run out of paint, 
you know, letting it fade here and there is okay. It's not gonna hurt anything. This time I'm actually gonna start on this side, let my darker stripes happen there. They don't line up perfectly. Sometimes it's okay for things not to be perfect. Just take it easy. If something messes up, see if there's a way just to let it be. See if that mess up could just become part of the painting anyways. This painting is more about having fun anyways. Oh, I'm gonna start over here. See, there's times where I push too hard on my sponge and it added a little more um, paint than I really wanted, but I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm not gonna try and fix it. So what I mean is, I'll bring this closer to you. I know sometimes it's hard to, to see and my paper tore, but it's okay because I'll explain that. So you see where sometimes it worked and sometimes um, it might have smeared. But I have, um, so now you need to let this dry. I already have this step completely dry so that I can continue on um, in just a bit. I'm gonna put this right back up, even though it is still wet, it's gonna be okay for me. For you, let it dry. Don't keep going. Get a blow dryer, do whatever it takes because you don't want this to mix into your llama. Your next step is going to be using your stencil. So you have the silhouette stencil part right here. And then this part to kind of show you what the llama's face looked like before I turned him into paint. I took this stencil kind of sideways off the edge of my canvas and then you're going to want to tape it down. Now my paint, my paint is not dry, okay? It is going to mix into this llama. It's okay because I do have this step already done over here and it is dry and I let it all dry in between each layer and I'll pull that out in just a few minutes when I'm ready. But to show you how to use this stencil, tape it down. And then you're going to take your sponge. Make sure, if you've used it before, make sure it's dry. I like to use, for the llama, I like to use the light brown. And I just tap into it. And then I'll also tap into some white. And I'll come back and get a little bit more light brown. Try not to glob it up. Hold your stencil down, and then you're going to daub it. Now, every now and then you're gonna see green on mine because my stencil's not dry. No, my first layers are not dry. This is why I'm telling you, please let it dry. Uh, I'm trying to get it to look like fluffy fur. So I'm not over mixing it. I want some lights and some darks as I'm going. Don't push too hard on your sponge. It will cause the paint to go underneath that stencil and then it might do things, uh, might cause some areas where you would have to fix it after you take the stencil off. So it's just easier not to push too hard. But slowly, Take your time. Ooh, that one has too much white, which is fine, because then I can go and I can get some more of that light brown and go right back over it with some light brown. So that gives us the llama head silhouette. Don't let it dry with your stencil on. Take your stencil off. The stencil is reusable, so set it to the side, let it dry. But then, once this is dry, we're ready for the fun, the fun details in the face. I like to start by drawing with a pencil, my details. So I'm gonna bring in this one that I've already got dry here. 
where you can see I have drawn on the glasses and the eyes. I really just kind of look at, I look at that cutout that I sent you. I start with the eyes, okay? And they don't need to be perfect. This is not about, I don't draw all these crazy lines that you see here. No, I just draw the oval for the eyes. You can see that even in here. So they're really just the ovals. So I start by drawing my oval eyes and then I move on to the triangle nose and a little circle mouth. Show where the, the uh, lips of the mouth are. And then I go back and, and draw the glasses on. I start the glasses with a straight line up here, the straight line for the glasses, and then add the other parts and the bow tie. You can do this. I know you can do this. Take your time, you can do it. Once you do have it drawn, well then the fun part of painting it in. So I'm gonna take this one up over my wet one and paint it in with you. I'm gonna use my small paintbrush for this. I'm gonna start with the eyes. Oh. I'm gonna start by painting the eyeballs in white. No, it doesn't have to be perfect. It might look a little crazy when you're starting. Uh oh, he looks, he looks a little uh, crazy because it's just white right there. That's fine. You might have to go back over it a few times. Um, depending on if it's covering up the paint underneath it or not. Once I have the eyeball in, then I add the iris. What is the iris? That's the color that's around your pupil. What is a pupil? That's a black dot of your eye. Your eye has a lot of different parts. I like to do um, the iris with the iris with a brown. Most animals have brown eyes, not all, but a lot. So I'll paint that iris in. Let that dry before adding your, your black pupils. Um, I also come back with black and I outline the eyes, but I'm gonna let that dry a bit before I do any of that. I'm gonna move on to the nose. And I'm going to start um, with, I'm going to start with browns. Yes, the tip of the nose is black, but I'm going to start with some browns and do what's called the bridge of the nose. So this part up here, that's the bridge of the nose. So I'm going to go to some dark brown and get some light brown. And then right where that bridge of the nose is, I'm going to paint it going up some. And the only real difference there from the fur color is that I'm using this paintbrush so it's taking away all the fluffy texture so that the bridge of the nose will show up. And sometimes I like to come back through and add a little dark to an edge of the bridge of the nose. That will help it show up later. I'm also going to add some dark brown above the eye kind of like where your eyelashes would be, eyelids, kind of paint that area in, kind of emphasizes the eyes more, maybe add a little bit of a bottom. I didn't really do that in my other painting. Every time I do a painting, I change it just a little. I don't even realize I'm doing it half the time. I'm gonna continue with this brown and I'm going to go to the cheeks and right where the cheek will be, I'm going to add a little curve and a little curve. And if that's too dark, that's fine. I can come back and add some 
light, some light, I mean, some light brown into it. So that it's not too crazy. The glasses are gonna cover part of that up too. So I'm not sure if you can see it on the edges there where his cheeks are. I might have done it a little high on mine. I can take it down some. There we go. It's going to work just fine. Let's go to the mouth. That mouth is done with mostly dark brown. So I'm going to paint that mouth in dark brown. And then the black is used as an outline on it to show all of its separations and stuff. Black came in there, but I'll come back to black in just a few minutes. So I'm gonna keep using my brown, my dark brown. And I wanna go up to the ears and kind of show where the edge of the opening of the ear is, because that's usually a little bit darker brown than the rest of the, the face. And I also like to use it as an outline. If you kind of look at that llama, I've outlined it with the dark brown. I know you're probably looking at yours right now going, oh, that looks a little crazy. No, 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 we're still working, we're still working. Don't, don't give up before it's even really started. This llama's got a ways to go. I like to make my outlines kind of choppy and wavy since he's such a fluffy, fluffy animal. Now I'll go back and with my black, do a little bit of the outlining of the eyes. I'm gonna add that pupil in. Even here, I kind of keep my lines a little choppy. There's a side of the eyeball. I didn't have eyelids in my original one, so I'm kind of showing where they are in this one. It's kind of fun to see how paintings change if you do them more than once. I'm an art teacher. Some paintings I will do hundreds of times because I do them with, with each of my classes. And I see 25 different classes a week, so I have a lot, of, a lot of different classes to show the same things too sometimes. And I'm going to outline here. Kind of give it a little bit more. You could keep going with that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop for now and I'll come back to it because I'm ready to do the glasses. In my original one, I chose a uh, light blue, but I've chosen that for my background here, so I won't want to do that again. Um, so it might take you a moment when you're switching colors. I think I'm gonna make it, uh, I think I'm gonna make it pink this time. I'm gonna take my pink, I'm gonna start, by doing that top of the glasses. These are meant to look a little goofy. Don't get stuck trying to make it all perfect. I'm just taking it around those eyes and then you know, glasses are held together right there on the bridge of the nose. Then I'm gonna go down to the bow tie. I'm gonna keep the bow tie pink this time. Last time I did it purple. And this time I'm just gonna fill the bow tie in. I'll come back and show all the different details and wrinkles in just a moment. Like I said, this paint a lot of times needs layers. So I'm first just gonna get a layer of pink on it. And 
I think I'll um, continue to use the purple as my uh, accent color. I didn't clean out my brush because I don't need to. So I'm going to take some of that purple and just mix it in at times. Maybe give it some at the top edge of these glasses, kind of make it more fun. Maybe around the edges here. Leaving it multicolored, not mixing it too much. Going to the bow tie, outlining its center. and edges with it. And then I came through and I tried to make it look a little more wrinkly by adding it inside too. But really you could keep going and play with this until you get it to, to um, the point that you're really happy with it. There's endless things you can go from here Thank you for joining me for our Llama with Glasses painting, and I look forward to creating with you soon.